The Serpent Speaketh Audiobook Part 11 Doctor's Office You look like you want to talk, Daryl. A lot has been on my mind, Doc. About what? About a lot of things. About Clyde and Frank and the farm and the city and... Clyde always seems to be an important topic for you. Well, among other things. You were the one that listed him first. Among other things. It's not bad to think about your brother. Do you feel like you've let Clyde down, Daryl? I don't know. Much more to say Maybe. Anymore. Maybe I don't want to talk about it. Maybe you don't, but I have a feeling yeah, they do. you have to. I used to be the to older brother, I don't want the one Clyde it. looked up to. But and you're not anymore, are you? Sorry, Daryl. I don't think I Just am. Give me my so what happened between him and you? June 4th, 2012. A lot of things. I guess time I just passed morning, and we grew apart. In sweat. I noticed the full That's moon kind in the of sky a pop-out answer, Daryl. Maybe. A sound in the house. So why did you grow apart? I want to feel thankful for all he has done. I guess I let I him down. Not trusting I was supposed to be the older him. brother. I was supposed to protect him. I tell myself quietly, and, and I you felt like you did. I, can watch TV I never could protect him from our father. I turn the I'm TV sure he understands I that, Daryl. I, I, I think on TV. some level he does, I but push the door open to go on outside. some level he still blames I me. I was supposed to be there to protect him, and I wasn't. What exactly happened, Daryl? How did you fail him? I begin to walk it wasn't just one thing. A lot of things happen. As I do, okay. Then tell me the first thing that pops in your head. I start okay. To Hello, Cleo. Me and Clyde Sandy snuck Air. into the baseball park. Hello, Daryl. We stole some she sodas from the shed because no one was there. Can I have a puff? I asked and your her. father caught you? I thought you didn't smoke. Something about yeah. And I ran away. Breathing. I shrug and she what happened then? Cigarette. I take a puff and cough and He beat Clyde more, pretty bloody. And take another puff I didn't even know it at the time. I was at a neighbor's playing a game sharp, and when I came back Thanks, things changed. I needed that. I you saw Clyde. That, I didn't know how to react. I, I think I just Looks pretended like, like nothing sleep. happened. I turn away from We covered it up like into the garden. We always did. I'll get by, I tell her. Your father it's being frank, abusive isn't, isn't your fault, Daryl. But I should have been able to. It wasn't the way things were supposed to be. August 27th, 2012. When I told Cleo I was going to win, I didn't know what shape that would take. But it all started when I stopped taking my pills. Keith was the one in charge of making sure I took my pills, which he did by handing my pills to me with breakfast and never checking to make sure I actually swallowed them. I was feeling less groggy after a few days and started to develop a plan that would mean I was taking control of my life. I would get a job, get my own place, and maybe move far away from everything I had ever known. One day, Clyde called and told me he wanted to talk said the last few times we met it felt like I wasn't there. I told him I would meet him, so later that day he drove over and picked me up and we drove about an hour into Pennsylvania where Clyde had scouted some caverns we could explore. As we hiked up the hill he felt the need to break the silence. Life can be pretty hard, is that right? He asked. I shrugged, saying, it's not so bad. We all do what we have to do, work or school. We survive. He laughed. How's your school going, by the way? I told him I hadn't yet started, but that I was sure it would be fine. Well, he said, ignoring me, I'll have you know that I'm still working on that advertising campaign. There's really not much to tell. It's terribly sleep-inducing. But maybe boring isn't so bad, I said. Is that so? He asked, inquisitively. Look. Look, Clyde, I know what you're trying to do. I know life isn't what I expect it to be. Everyone tells me that, and I'm trying my hardest to accept that. 
accepting that my past is messed up, accepting that I can't live with Cleo. Life isn't perfect, but I'm starting to move on. Life isn't perfect, Clyde repeated. And maybe being happy isn't the point, I said. Clyde nodded, not really saying much, but in a way that seemed like he was holding something back. Well, let's go find those caves, he said as he ambled down into a gap. After half an hour, after half an hour of walking up hills and through thickets and briars in the hot summer wood, we came across one of the caves. It wasn't much to look at. <clears throat> it's kind of a disappointment, isn't it? He asked. Well, life's a disappointment, I said. Clyde shrugged. I laughed. Listen, Clyde. You know, I, I appreciate you taking me up here. It's really nice of you. But just say what you have to say. He scoffed. I've told you this before, Daryl. I'm here to help you. I'm your brother. I just want to help you out. But I'm the big brother, I said. I'm the one that's supposed to be helping you out. Clyde shrugged. Like you said before, life isn't perfect. Anyway, we had to get moving. If we sit here too long, we'll be eaten by these mosquitoes. We found the other cavern after hiking up another hill. It was a little bit bigger, but there was poison ivy all around, and it was equally disappointing. We walked back to the car quietly. We both acted like everything was fine, like we were happy brothers. When we got back to the car, I told Clyde I really enjoyed the hike. It felt like we were kids again when we used to do that all the time, I lied. The past is the past. As much as we'd like to go back, we can't, he said. I wish I could have been a better brother, I said. Me too, Clyde said. But you did the best you could, and like I said, the past is the past. I did, I said. And I'm sorry that I wasn't a better brother for you when you started really having problems, Clyde said. I nodded. I feel like time is standing still sometimes, I said. Like the past is only an illusion and there's only this one moment. Clyde groaned again. I started to talk, but my thoughts and words trailed off when I realized my brother wasn't listening. On the drive home, we didn't talk. I just stared out the window and noticed that we were passing by a nursery. I'm going to make a new garden, begin with replanting that tree. The one that Frank cut down, I told Clyde. It'll be my first step in making a new future. Clyde told me that Frank would never let me back, and that it was probably a good idea not to go back to the farm. I knew he was right, and I told Clyde that I wasn't going to plant the tree in Frank's garden. I was going to start something new. I was going to start my own garden. He said that was a good idea. We both waved goodbye, and when he was gone, I went inside. In the stories I wrote as a child, the good guys always won. The old gods fought the serpent time and time again, but there was never any but there was never any question who was destined to win. But in life I realized that the path is not always so black and white. The journey into darkness is not simply a struggle of good against evil, but a struggle going on inside oneself. A journey a journey, a struggle, a struggle, a struggle with one's true nature. The monsters one fights are all too often just a reflection of fears. The fear of power, the fear of change, the fear of death. One could fight against the darkness and maybe gain a bit of headway, but whatever one did, the darkness would remain. In the end, if one is honest with oneself, one would see that the darkness was just as much a part of oneself as the light. And the only way to find peace is to accept everything. Accept everything as it is. I didn't understand that as a child, back when stories were simpler. But I think I'm beginning to understand it now. <laughs>